recording as well. Uh, so just a reminder that we are recording this session and we'll make it available uh, on our YouTube channel on our blog. So if uh, you did want to kind of uh, rewind or share it with anyone, uh, it will be available probably in the next couple of days as well. Yeah. Uh, do you just move? Oh, yeah. Cool. So thanks everyone for jumping on nice and uh, nice and promptly. So we'll get started um, just with the intros and then we'll pass it over to Catherine and Jolly on um, who are our special guest presenters for today. Yep, so today we're talking about Gippsland Water's recently released um, urban water strategy, which was created in Power BI. Um, so Jolion and Catherine will talk to us about the vision and the ideas behind it. And then Alice and I will focus a bit more on like the Power BI technical elements that we brought in. So glad that you can all be part of it. Um, just our standard sort of housekeeping, um, please just be considerate and put yourself on mute um, when, you're not, when you're not talking. If you do have questions, please write them in the chat. Um, we'll look to answer them as we go. Otherwise, we will hopefully have some time for Q&A at the end. Um, as Alice just mentioned, we're recording today's session and we'll make it available. And a Teams tip, if you need to zoom into anything, you can hold control and zoom in on your mouse. Um, but we've all been using Teams uh, long enough now, I think, so we're uh, working with it. Um, just like to also acknowledge the people and the elders of the Boon Warung and the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation, um, so the traditional owners, custodians of the lands and waters from where we're presenting today, which is down in the Mornington Peninsula, and also pay our respects um, to the traditional owners and the elders from anywhere that you're dialing in from um, around Australia or Indigenous peoples around the world. Um, Discovery I, um, Alice and I are the co-founders, directors, and we work with uh, Daniel Marsh-Patrick and also a graphic designer. So we sort of put this um, meetup forward uh, every every month to really just, I guess, hear interesting Power BI and data analytics examples from across the environmental and water industry. Um, and this is just some of the areas that we work in. And yeah, on to the main event today. So our special guests are Jolion Taylor and Catherine Cooling um, from Gippsland Water. So Jolion is a senior water resources engineer and Catherine is a strategic planning and resources engineer. And we've been working with them both and the team um, over the past few months in helping to develop uh, this urban water strategy using Power BI. So today they'll take us through the idea and the vision um, and sort of walk us through each of the dashboard pages. And then Alice and I will focus a little bit more on some of the technical elements. And just for everyone's reference, and we might just paste this in the chat um, or yeah, just click on it. Uh, this public, this report is being hosted and publicly available on um, Gippsland Water's website. So you can um, access it there. There is no chat. So I will. I'm not sure. So Teams has been doing. Yeah, Christian will post in the chat on another computer. <laughs> I'm not sure if everyone's seen. Teams has done a few updates in uh, the last couple of days. And uh, if you can't find where your chat button is, you're not alone. I've lost it on my computer. But lucky Christian has it on his. Um, so we'll post that uh, in the chat so you can have a look. This is a public report. Uh, you can go through the different pages. Uh, as uh, Jolion and Catherine are kind of discussing it. Um, uh, but with that, I might hand it over to Catherine and Jolion to share a bit more about uh, the vision and talk us through what exactly is an urban water strategy and how they're using this tool for their uh, community consultation and engagement process. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Alice. Um, so we've got a couple of slides just to kick things off. Um, so I'll share my screen. And hopefully you're all seeing our blue slide here with um, our urban water strategy yep. um, dashboard snapshot on it. So um, thank you, Alice and Christian, for inviting us to share Gippsland Water's Power BI dashboard for our urban water strategy with this group. Um, and uh, today, Jolien and I both join you from the uh, land of the Gunai, Kurnai, um, for this presentation. Um, so um, as Alice and Christian have already um, said, Jolien and myself, uh, we're part of the uh, Gippsland Water Urban Water Strategy Working Group um, within our organisation. So we, we've been working with um, Discovery Eye to 
um, develop this dashboard. Um, it's a supporting piece for our urban water strategy. But so today, what, what we're going to run through with you is um, how this dashboard is supporting our urban water strategy, um, our experience um, of the Power BI dashboard development process, and then we'll give you a quick fly through of the dashboard, sort of more from a how we envisage the users to be interacting with it. Um, and then, as Alison Christian have mentioned, we'll um, hand over for a bit more of a Power BI technical flavour um, that they can give us. So um, I'll hand over to Jolyon shortly, but I'll just give you all a quick um, about Gippsland Water to get you a bit orientated. So. Um, we provide water and sewage services to more than 71,000 customers in our region. So um, we're located in Victoria. In, in the bottom image, you can see our green um, service area identified there. Um, so we cover quite a large area um, right across Gippsland, West Gippsland, through to sort of the edge of East Gippsland there. Um, we supply drinking water to households and businesses across 39 towns and communities, and then we also provide wastewater services to 29 of um, the towns in the area as well. Um, as you can see in the top box, we, we have quite a large and ex, uh, extensive infrastructure network. Um, unlike the uh, sort of more metropolitan um, water supply systems. Not all of our systems are interconnected. So we've got um, a, a lot of individual systems that we look after. Um, now, I guess I'll hand over to Jolien to sort of tell you a bit more about what the urban water strategy does um, for our business. Sure, thank you, Catherine. Ah uh, yeah, so Jolly and Taylor, Senior Water Resources uh, Engineer at Gippsland Water. Uh, so I thought first, um, yeah, just given that uh, there, uh, I understand that not everyone in the room or in the virtual rooms from Victoria. So um, urban water supply and and wastewater services um, in Victoria are um, managed by um, Urban Water Corporation. So we're statutory corporations. We're we're owned by the Victorian state government. Um, our boards are accountable to the Minister for Water and the Minister issues um, our, our boards and our, our organisations with um, a document called the Statement of Obligations and that sets out um, a large range of tasks that we um, we all must do and so that's where urban water strategies um, come from. They're one of the requirements of this Statement of Obligations and it's a task that we need to do every, every five years. Um, there's there's a large uh, body of technical work that goes into an urban water strategy, um, but equally the the government is um is quite clear um, in their directions to us that uh, it's a process that we must do collaboratively. Um, well, sorry, not not so much collaboratively, but um but but in a manner in which we um we engage um with um with our customer base um, and so we have our um we've really got two work streams that are um going on concurrently, um, and that's the, the technical work as well as the um, the customer um, engagement. Um, so the urban water strategy is a 50-year uh, outlook uh, for both our water and our wastewater systems. It's um, a requirement that we consider the whole water cycle um, in um, preparing an urban water strategy. It needs to be an adaptive plan, uh, so none of us know exactly what's going to happen over the coming uh, 50 years, uh, but we've got um, considerable insights into the range of scenarios that could play out over the next 50 years. Uh, we've got guidance on um, some of the climate change um, trajectories that um, could play out. Um, we've also got guidance on um, population um, growth scenarios that, that could occur. And so what we're really doing in preparing an urban water strategy is uh, working with our customers to decide on the, the levels of service that, that are acceptable to them, um, how, how reliable our water supply should be um, under a range of um, you know, year to year um, climate conditions. Uh, and, um, and we're considering um, a range of current and emerging trends like climate change, population growth, um, 
droughts that that um, that could occur, drought, um, droughts potentially that are worse than droughts we've ever seen before, and and looking at each one of our um, water systems and wastewater systems um, to to understand how how they might perform and um, and through that process to identify where where we might need to take take action, um, augment supplies, um, better manage demand. Um, undertake actions um, on both sides of the equation to um to maintain that that level of service that we've agreed with our customers so um it, it it's a requirement that we report back ultimately to to our customers um in in the form of some sort of um, reporting and in the past um we've done so by means of a, a fairly large um pdf type document that we publish on our website um, you can see there on the right, the last one that we did was um, over 250 pages long. And um, it's something that um, I've always been a bit uncomfortable about. Um, I sort of, you know, try to um, put myself in the shoes of a, of a busy customer who, um, who might be interested um, in better understanding um, their, um, their water supply and, and wastewater, um, want to have some sort of input on that, but really, how are they going to get their head around it when they've got to wade through large documents like that? Um, I I was actually quite inspired by um, by a process that DELP, um, so DELP are um, Victoria's um, Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, um, the one of the regulators of the Victorian water um, industry. Um, DELP uh, actually engaged uh, Discovery Eye to um, prepare a, a dashboard as, as a way of um, presenting the um, outcomes from um, a project they were doing um, looking at um, the Victorian water grid and what are the, the future um, opportunities and challenges associated with Victoria's water grid. And I thought this is a great way of, of showing this information of um, improving um, you know, water literacy education um, for those that are interested um, in a way that's fun to use. Um, it's um, it's it's easy to use. It's quick. It's quick to get an overview of things. And um, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could do something like that for um, for our urban water strategy? And um, we we work to DELP guidelines in preparing our urban water strategies. And um, one of the um, a quote from the urban water strategy guidelines are to make use of available and existing and emerging technologies and processes to meaningfully engage with stakeholders. And so. Um, I, I fully accept there's always going to be quite possibly a majority of, of customers who who aren't interested. They're happy to just um, pay their bill as long as it's not too much and, um, you know, get clean water whenever they turn the tap on and um, not have to worry about things once they press the flush button and, and we just take care of it all. But, um, but we really wanted to put something out there for those that are interested in learning more um, to, um, to have a, a more engaging and um, um, a better, you know, a better experience um, in in trying to, um, you know, learn more about um, what we do, and um, and such that we, we can better prepare them to engage with us. Um, we've we've got some upcoming uh, workshops that we're doing um, as part of our um, engagement process. So it's not just this dashboard. We've got a range of activities that we're undertaking to engage with customers. Um, and, and this is great that we've already got um, our first stage of our dashboard out there. It's on our internet site. Um, it's there. People can, who are coming to our workshops um, can, can use this to get an understanding. They can, um, they can go into it. They, can, they don't have to wade through sections that aren't relevant to where they live. They can um, go straight to their town and they can learn exactly what happens to a drop of water from um, catchment to their tap and then what happens after they press flush what happens to that drop of water on the rest of its um journey so um to that end i'll i'll hand back to catherine to um to go through the um the next slide um which um you know outlines um i guess how we how we went about developing this um this dashboard thanks jolian um, so Jolian's touched on a couple of really key points sort of through the development process because they're really reflecting upon what we've gone through to get to the, the current dashboard and the, the sort of upcoming second stage um, of the dashboard. 
um, there were some really clear sort of steps that we went through um, as the client. So as Jolian said, we sort of had this decision to pursue a web-based product and it was awesome that Jolian identified this opportunity um, through another organisation using Power BI, another piece that Discovery I had worked on to um, to see the opportunity that could be used for our urban water strategy. And really there were, as Jolene said, there, there's we sort of had this question about how many people download and read our PDF reports. Um, we sort of have anecdotal information that suggests it's a fairly select audience that download these reports to go through, it's considering that they are, are quite um, usually lengthy documents and it, it takes time to find the pieces of information that you're after. So, um, and we also had some feedback from our executive um, upon reflection of our previous urban water strategy going into this one. To, they wanted to sort of look at ways of making it more engaging, more easier and more enjoyable for our customers to learn about where their water comes from and where their sewage goes. So um, yeah, it was it, it seemed like a perfect fit for where we wanted to go with this. And it's it will be sort of a summary of what our because we will still prepare our full technical report and that will be made avail publicly available. But the the dashboard is sort of like the landing point for people to come to to find out about our urban water strategy. So the next sort of Thing I wanted to touch on was um, the process of working with Discovery Eye and our internal urban water strategy working group. So um, our um, organisation has a working group put together um, to work through the urban water strategy and make sure that we meet the requirements set out by DELT and make sure we get all the input from across the business that we need. So there is quite a group covering um, our communications team, our assets uh, engineering areas, um, our uh, operations through our traditional owners, um, environmental teams. Um, so it's quite a broad reaching um, team and we needed to sort of decide what we wanted to present in the dashboard versus what we were happy just to cover in the report because we knew that we wouldn't be able to cover everything in the dashboard. And this is where sort of through these um, iterative process with Alice and Christian that we found that we could go through this sort of stage development of the dashboard and it was staged in two ways. Um, the, the first way it was um, we sort of got Alice and Christian came back with some ideas for how we could present the types of information that we wanted to present through Power BI. And then on another level, we sort of realised that given the relatively short timeframes to develop the, the dashboard, um, we could um, roll out an earlier phase um, to support our community education and um, to begin the discussions with our community and begin sharing information. And then um, now that we're further progressed um, through our urban water strategy development, we have the opportunity to share our outlooks for our um, water and sewer systems. So as Jolian touched on, the, the purpose of the urban water strategy is to look out for the next 50 years for our um, supply and demand and capacity and demand um, for our systems going forward. So once we'd sort of worked out the process that we were going to go through, um, then we had to get all our information together and we really worked out that we wanted to have um, some text supporting the key themes of our urban water strategy, some of the key areas, including climate change, population growth, drought preparedness that Jolian touched upon. And also we wanted to have an interactive map so people could follow through and see where, where their water comes from and then where, where their um, sewage goes to and eventually goes out to the environment as treated. Um, so 
to do that, we had to get input from across our business. So we had lots of involvement with our communications and engagement team um, to get to get things in the right format, using the right words for our customers um, to fit in with our styles. And it required quite a bit of um, input and time from their perspective to get to get that side of things right. And then we also had a lot of input from our operations department. Um, you can see the photo in the top right hand corner is of our Warrigal sewage treatment plant. So we had, we put out the call to our operators to get photos from across our region. We wanted to sort of make it a really good visual so people could really get an idea of what our systems look like um, and to, um, to make sure that we had information that was presented in a way that our operations teams were comfortable with. So we had collected photos and we also um, we had some existing process diagrams. We wanted to to get them to a format that people could use in a more interactive way. So we had to make sure that they were presented in a way that were reflective um, uh, with the correct level of detail. So it required a lot of advice from operations. So once we got, the, they were sort of two parts of the data and then we had all the spatial data that we had to um, collate and get into a format that was suitable for Alice and Christian to push into the, the right shapes for the dashboard. And it, it really was quite an exercise to get our data in shape for sharing publicly. Um, we have ways that we use our data and it meets our purposes, but that's not necessarily going to line up with another separate body using the data for different purposes. And it was quite challenging to go through that process. And then also it was a significant time required for data reconciliation phase. So working out um, where things didn't quite line up, understanding all the sort of exceptions in our systems and um, how we understand and how it's best conveyed to our community um, for the best understanding. So that that was quite a significant time and we really appreciated all the support that we got from Alice and Christian to get to get that in place. And yeah, so it, it, that was perhaps going into it, we we didn't know what we were in for until we got there and were um, faced with that challenge. So then we got through this stage one, we had a dashboard, which I'll show you in a moment, that, that met our requirements to get an interactive map, some the context words about what um, we wanted to share with our community. So then our communications team came up with a dashboard rollout plan so that we could um, then share this dashboard with our community and our stakeholders. So um, because it was a bit different to sort of the kinds of mediums that our communications and engagement team have used before, there was a bit to work out with sharing the link. And also we wanted to just see how much feedback we were going to get on the dashboard, whether there were things that we might we might not have picked up in the um, our multiple reviews that um, that might have need to be um, fixed up before it got out really far and got shared. But we we didn't really get as much feedback as perhaps at least I had anticipated. So it, it's it's sort of been a wait and see process, but we really did a gradual release sharing internally with the Gippsland Water staff and then sort of gradually um, feeding out via our community newsletter, via our social media pages. And um, we've also developed a demonstration video. Um, so our team to support the rollout and to share with the community a bit of a fly through of um, how the dashboard can be interacted with and sort of just to get people sort of orientated with some of the ways of interacting with the Power BI product. So we found we've uh, on the right hand side, bottom right of the slide, you can see that we've got some stats of what we've seen in our um, 
interactions with our web page and the various links that link back to the um, dashboard. So we've had a few watches of the demonstration video, <laughs> but um, you can see that we've had quite a lot of impressions through social media and a few, quite a few clicks through to our urban water strategy web page, which would then lead through to our dashboard. So we're sort of expecting once we um, get into our uh, focus groups, interacting um, with our community more, and as Jolia mentioned, sharing the dashboard as a way of sort of um, preparing those groups um, for the focus group workshops, um, we we'll, would we'll expect some of those um, numbers to come up a bit more. And then we'll also share the next stage of the, the dashboard through social media. Um, so perhaps that leaves me in a good place to sort of give you a tour of the dashboard, I guess. Um, I, I'm not sure, Alison Christian, whether it's worth taking any questions now before we jump into the dashboard, or I can't see if there's any questions in the chat or anything like that. Um, no, just some uh, just some uh, general comments. Catherine, like saying, uh, yeah, data wrangling is commonly you know ninety percent of these types of projects. So there was an acknowledgement. <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, the idea of a dashboard rollout plan was um, yeah, like people like that idea. So I think maybe if you want to go for a fly through, and then we can go after you. So it sounds good. Great. So if you just bear with me, I'll swat, swoop across to our dashboard. Okay, so hopefully you can all see our Gibson Water Urban Water Strategy 2022 dashboard. Beautiful. Okay, so I'll, I'll just go through it quickly. I won't go into too much detail about the individual pages, but the way that we've got this set up with Alice and Christian's help is we've got these topics down the, the left-hand side here. These are sort of the, the the themes and considerations for our going through the urban water strategy. Um, so, for example, th these pages sort of mm, look similar to a PowerPoint slide. They have um, some text giving background about the the topic, and hopefully, my internet's a little bit slow. Hopefully, it loads in a second. Yeah. So um, there's some informative. Um, images that are a bit interactive. Um, for example, you can click on the button to see some of the different climate influences. Um, and then there's navigational arrows to move through um, some of the contextual information. And so we have similar information with droughts, water efficiency, supply reliability and population growth. And down here is our placeholder for the stage two where we introduce our outlooks. So if I come back to the home page, um, the, this is when it loads, this is our interactive map showing our um, water supply systems in blue and our sewer systems in purple. So it shows our um, service boundary is sort of highlighted um, outside our service boundary a bit um, shaded out. Um, this map you can interact with, zoom in, um, find out a bit about which supply system your um, town might be located in, um, and then also click to select it just to see the, the extent of the su service supply area that you're located in. So the button down here goes into sort of an, another level of detail of our water systems and sewer systems. So there's quite a lot going on in these pages. I'm sure Alice and Christian will go through the technical aspects a bit more and you might appreciate the time it takes for these pages to load. Um, but so the way that we wanted these pages set up was so that um, a person from our community could come to this page and type in their town name, for example, Druin, which is in the west of our catchment, 
and using the, the slicer on the left, they can click on their town to zoom in to that area, see the extent of their water distribution network for their town. Then in the, the next level of the hierarchy, they can have a look at their water treatment plant, so where their treated water supply comes from and where the, um, the other areas that are serviced by that same water treatment plant. Um, and then up into the next level of our water resource systems, so looking right up to um, where the water is sourced from, um, we have these icons on the map that sort of have details about our pipes, our network structures, um, our water storages, the treatment plants. And so all of these have the um, hover functionality with a bit of information about each of the items. And so if I zoom in here, we can find out about our um, service basins, um, some of our pump stations, tanks, and some of the names of the pipelines, if you get your cursor in just the right spot. Um, so the other information that comes up when you interact with this slicer is um, some uh, narrative text about the water supply system, um, about the explaining the, where the water is coming from and where where which treatment plants are serviced by that source and then a bit about the customers that are within that area. Then there's some photos. These are the photos that our operators and were um, harvested from our previous urban water strategy um, here so people can slide through and sort of get a bit of a visual appreciation of what's in that catchment. There's a couple of buttons here that then lead on to separate pages with more detail. So earlier I mentioned about the treatment process diagrams. Um, and when this page loads, it shows um, for the, the treatment plants in this water supply catchment, um, the treatment processes. And these um, process diagrams are interactive. Users can zoom in to get a bit more, um, get a bit of a better look. And then there's these hand um, prompts where people can sort of find out about the step in the process and what is happening at that stage. And, and clicking on that also allows the user to see um, the description of the treatment process down in the blue band at the bottom of the page. Um, returning back to the um, water supply system interactive map, there is our water supply catchment map. So that links to a page with another interactive map showing the boundary of our water supply catchment. In this case, we're looking at the, the Tarrigo River catchment that supplies Warrigal, Drew and Nirum South. Um, a bit of a description about the catchment itself um, for users to... Th this is sort of a summary of what would be presented in our final urban water strategy report. So what I've shown you for the water supply systems, we essentially have the same thing for our sewer systems. So on, on the back end of the process, receiving the sewage from customers and um, where the treated um, wastewater is released. So again, you can see here photos of the wastewater treatment plant discharge point um, sewage treatment processes using the same search for your systems tool. And in this case, as for water, you can also zoom in directly on the map to um, look at your town using sort of point and zoom functionality and then just click on the um, town to then learn about the um, water resource catchment that services that town. So I think that um, 
it's kind of an introduction to how we hope people will use this dashboard. Um, it, the next stage of the dashboard in our coming soon page here will have um, our supply and demand outlook plots and our capacity and demand outlook plots for our sewer system. So we're really excited to get get that stage of the dashboard up and running. So I guess I'll hand back to Alice and Christian. If there's any questions, I can answer them. Otherwise, I'll let you guys run through the technical side. Awesome. Thank you so much, Catherine and Jolion. That was really, um, really interesting and nice to hear from your perspective about the kind of dashboard design process and uh, how uh, you envisage end users to be using this as a bit more of an exploratory tool to lift the lid on uh, where your water comes from and where it goes. Um, I think Christian's monitoring the chat on the other computer, so it keeps backing off, but I think, are there any uh, kind of technical no, questions? Just just a lot of good good feedback and comments, and then a few sort of Power BI technical questions, which I've been frantically trying to address as yeah. we've gone through. But um, no, I think it's, uh, yeah, thank you. That was a fantastic, fantastic introduction. Um, so what we were just going to go through there, uh, go through now is, Catherine and Jolian have explained obviously the context and shown the Power BI report, how it looks um, obviously published online. We were gonna just talk through a bit of the design features used for these reports and then take you through the PBIX or the Power BI um, underlying file. Yeah, so I guess um, Catherine and Jolion mentioned uh, that Power BI is an amazing tool to help complement written reports. So they're still pulling together their technical document to present the findings of their urban water strategy. Uh, but we can use Power BI to create really kind of rich and graphical representations of some of that data, which can sometimes be challenging to communicate in written static documents. So things like having interactive maps, interactive charts, uh, photos, and sort of the infographics and things like that. Uh, this is where Power BI can really become a, a great asset to help you complement uh, your written report. Um, so a lot of people, we've got a bit of a mix on the call here today, I imagine. We've got some people who are really uh, working in the environmental space and others who are working quite deeply in Power BI. Um, and uh, as a lot of the comments have said in the chat, the data wrangling and getting the data right, that does take a lot of time and that is often a core focus of Power BI projects. Uh, but hand in hand, when you're creating reports which are going to be viewed by a wide range of different audiences, uh, so technical and non-technical, that's where design really matters. Um, so this is just a funny cartoon illustrating that doesn't matter how fancy your dashboard looks, how many metrics you cram into it, uh, if you don't, um, if people don't understand uh, what all of these different uh, metrics mean, uh, then it can really be lost. So we don't want to spend all of this time that Catherine and Jolion mentioned curating and collating that data. If at the end of the day, uh, the end users, are, they just can't understand what the key messages we're trying to communicate here. Um, so in terms of Power BI, what makes a good design? So I like to think of it as a lot of little things together done right. So Catherine mentioned the intuitive navigation and she showed kind of the different data storytelling techniques where we can turn the page to present information in a logical order. Um, here we've got a lot of visual communication elements. We're using uh, things like interactive maps, photo galleries, uh, the interactive infographics as well to try to paint that picture of what these systems look like in reality. Um, it's about uh, using corporate themes and styles uh, so Jolion and Catherine both mentioned that uh, during the project, it wasn't just the technical um, and operations team who got involved, but also the communications and marketing team to make sure that we're designing a tool which aligns with your corporate brand. Um, so I know some people might be thinking, but I'm a data analyst, I'm not a designer. Uh, this isn't uh, in my repertoire of skills. Uh, so in terms of Power BI, there's a lot of tips you can do to try to accelerate your report design. Um, so Catherine and Jolion both mentioned we had a bit of a staged approach on this project. Uh, we started off with a sketch, then we created a mock-up. We used a subset of their data, uh, so they didn't have to get everything there, just so we could start iterating and co-designing this together. Um, we used a lot of uh, conditional formatting 
uh, images and icons, and also aligning it with their corporate colors and themes, things like that. Uh, so in the context of Power BI, uh, while it is an amazing data processing and analysis platform, uh, today I want to talk through a couple of the key kind of technical elements of this strategy uh, and lift the lid on how we kind of uh, use Power BI, we push the boundaries a little bit uh, with some of these visuals. Oh, so Catherine and Jolian have showed us uh, what the dashboard looks like as a public URL link. Um, what I've got here open is Power BI in the Power BI desktop. So for those of you who are familiar with Power BI, uh, this is the desktop application. This is where we design and create these reports. Um, so Catherine mentioned that we've got uh, navigation features here. So we can click on buttons and it navigates us to a different page in our report. And the way we've uh, configured this in Power BI is by using a series of buttons. So we've got a whole heap of buttons here um, and also bookmarks. So we have a lot of bookmarks in our Power BI reports, uh, which is really taking a snapshot of all of these different pages. So you can see that uh, we've got a lot of different bookmarks here. Um, for anyone who's used to working with bookmarks in Power BI, you know it can be a little bit uh, challenging to keep on top of all of them. Uh, but that's how we've created this kind of page turning effect. We're creating lots of layers of these different uh, visuals, one on top of each other, uh, where we're showing and hiding these different visuals. And we're using bookmarks to dynamically turn these visuals on and off. And you can do some really cool things with bookmarks. So it's not just about the navigation and showing and hiding visuals. Um, for some of these more detailed images that the team wanted to include, uh, they're a little bit small, uh, depending on what device people are viewing these, to get all of the detail. So we've used bookmarks to enlarge these visuals as well. So we can see that um, uh, we can navigate between the different pages here. Probably the most uh, complex pages were these water and sewer district pages. Uh, where Catherine showed us, we have the interactive maps, the photo galleries, um, and also those infographics as well. So there are a few questions in the chat about this map. Um, so this is the custom visual icon map, which we've spoken about in a previous session. Um, so it takes in spatial files in the format of WKT, and we're just presenting the data. Um, and the real value of this map is it allows you to combine points, lines, and polygons all together as you need to really communicate that message. One of the really unique features of this report, um, though, was actually the um, interactive infographics. So I'm going to just click through to that. Here, Alice has clicked on the Moe water treatment plant within the Latrobe system. And we've created um, you know, the filter within the bookmark as we click through, and then that's what we can see on the page here. But the way that these infographics are created is uh, we drew them up in Adobe Illustrator based on um, what the team wanted. Uh, so there's a whole range of different infographics here. We export them as PNG, and then we created, um, we added on the little hand icons, which become um, SVG format. So we've got a PNG base map, and then we bring it into Adobe Illustrator again, that image. Then we put the hands on and we export it all as an SVG file format. And what we've done here is this is actually the raw code of the SVG that sits obviously behind the, um, the image itself. And what we've done is we've linked up each of the different layers. So each hand represents a step in the treatment process. And we've linked that up um, into the data. So the data shows we have, okay, say so step one, step two, and then we've got a description of what step one is, what step two is, and then that's how you can assign um, each of these different steps to make it interactive. The visual we're using here is the custom visual known as the synoptic panel. Um, we've used it obviously for water treatment processes. This is commonly used for say like in warehouses, to establish maybe inventory across different rooms um, or these sorts of things. So it was a really cool, cool visual and a lot of fun sort of playing in that both within Adobe Illustrator, but then also changing the SVG code in the back end. 
And another big feature of this um, report, obviously being being public, is um, using Gippsland Water's familiarity in terms of colours. Um, we've got you know the images. So the team, as Catherine said, went out and took a lot of photos of their systems, their plants, and so we're able to bring that information in to give more context for the users as to what these systems look like. We've created our own Gippsland Water theme file, so that's why you've got you know consistency in the blues and the whites. Um, obviously, the you know the Gippsland Water logo, and also this little wave image on the um, on the bottom right, which is commonly seen on Gippsland Water's reports, um, whether it be PDF or in digital format. So, I guess for the team, it was a lot of sort of working with their marketing and their comms people. To get an understanding of um, you know how they wanted this information presented in a way that is uniquely Gippsland Waters and um, yeah based on the feedback we've had internally from the team I think you know we've, we've been able to deliver that message um, in terms of the way that this information and data is presented. Um, and sometimes uh, Power BI uh, while we can uh, use a lot of their core visuals we've got a whole heap of great visuals we can use to visualize our data uh, we have a whole heap of custom visuals uh, that we can draw on uh, to really try to kind of raise the standard of what our reports look like. Uh, but sometimes there isn't a one size fits all visual. Uh, here we're using a, the special bespoke custom visual, uh, which Daniel Marsh Patrick has created. Um, uh, this visual is called Gennard, so it's this custom visual here. And this allows us to actually uh, code up very specific uh, and quite uh, bespoke visuals based on what the data is we want to present. Um, so here we've got a very simple uh, chart or what looks to be a simple chart here, but behind the scenes, uh, this is all kind of custom code uh, that Daniel's helped us script up to represent exactly the type of visual that the Gippsland Water team wanted to present. Um, so this is a very simple version of a water supply demand chart. Uh, what we've been working with the team on as part of stage two is creating some really uh, specialized and specific water supply or yield and demand charts uh, for all of their water systems and their sewer systems uh, with custom things like annotations and toggling on and off the different uh, scenarios to help them be able to communicate to the general public in a really clear way, uh, what the future of the water supply uh, and storage capacity looks like. Um, so just so you know, you're not limited just to the visuals which are inside of Power BI as the core visuals, the external custom visuals. Uh, sometimes if you need a bit more custom code, you could use visuals like the R and Python visuals to create your own kind of bespoke look and feel. Uh, or other visuals out there like this Denev one as well. So I think they were some of the key key features we wanted to run through. Um, I might just quickly check the chat. Yeah, <laughs> but if there were any uh, questions, we've got about maybe 10 more minutes. If anyone does want to come off mute and um, and ask a question about either Power BI to us or, or just kind of the whole uh, general process to Catherine and Jolion. Um, it'd be great to hear from you. Sina did have a question asking, are there any other custom visuals besides the map? So okay. Yeah, the other custom visuals, we had the card browser for um, uh, for the image gallery. Uh, we had synoptic panel uh, for the interactive infographic. So we've got icon map for the map. Uh, we're using Deneb for that uh, supply demand chart. I think that was it. Um, and Belinda's got a question. Um, Belinda, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, just um, I'm not sure if it's for Catherine or Discover AI, but that fly through video you talked about, just to give people some advice on how to use the dashboard, how they could interact with it. Is that something um, that you did together, or was that more like your comms department doing some grabs? Yeah, so. Um, thanks for the question, Belinda. That that was something that we did internally. We it was um our so our urban water strategy working group, um pretty much Jolly and myself and the comms team um sort of working through what we needed to cover in or what we wanted to cover in that fly through and then um 
getting our comms team to get it ready, the recording ready to share publicly. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Belinda. And uh, Olivia, you had a question? Um, yeah, I was wondering uh, over the next couple of years before the next um, water strategy, was there a plan to kind of keep updating things like your network data um, as more areas develop and come online? Or is that going to kind of stay static until it gets revisited for the next urban water strategy? Uh, did you want me to get this one, Catherine? Yeah, if you yeah, want to. So, yeah, sure. Um, so we, we are planning to um, keep updating it periodically. We don't have a, um, a locked in set frequency or calendar for that. We've got uh, a few more uh, updates we want to do as our current urban water strategy um, develops. Um, it's due for submission to the Minister at the end of March next year. Uh, we're currently working on, as has been mentioned already, um, bringing in the Outlook uh, charts. Uh, subsequent to that, um, we haven't locked in the date yet, but we'll um, we'll bring in um, our proposed um, action plan. Um, and, um, and then I guess post um, submission to the Minister, we're still giving a bit of thought to that, but um, Victoria's um, urban water corporations are required to do each year a thing called the annual water outlook. And the annual water outlook serves a, a few functions, but one of them really is to provide the community with um, with a once a year um, update on on how the water corporation is progressing uh, with its um, um, urban water strategy action plan, whether any of the emerging trends are changing um how, how they're um how they're going is 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 demand um increasing at a higher rate than anticipated or lower rate how what might we um change um our our plan um accordingly we're required to um you know plan adaptively to um an uncertain future and so it might be that we um that we present our um our annual water outlook um in in this sort of a manner but I haven't quite um got my head around exactly how we may or may not do that yet Thanks. Thanks. It's awesome. Um, and I think, uh, Laura, you've got a question? Okay. I do. Um, hi, guys. Great um, dashboard. It looks really good. Uh, I had a question. I'm not sure whether it's for you, Christian and Alice, but um, you've got a massive document there. I'm not sure how many pages it was, Jolly, and, and then you're putting that into a dashboard. I imagine there's a lot of data there and potentially it could slow down if you, I don't know if there's any nifty tricks that you used if to sort of clean the data and make it a bit faster or if you had any trouble with that. Um, well, sorry, the, the big document, the PDF, that that was from last time. So that was yeah. 2017 and, and really that, that was just, um, you know, quite a, a lengthy narrative and a lot of um, technical detail. Um, in terms of what we presented in the dashboard, um, we were really just looking to make it fit for purpose for the intended audience. Um, we um, we didn't want to go into um, a great um, deal of um, detail, so it was it was more just a um, an exercise of um, just fleshing out what are what are the key points um, for that target audience, um, trying to wordsmith it accordingly, and. Um, uh, working with our our comms team to um just um to get that right. Thanks, Julian. I guess in terms of Power BI, um, uh, we did see uh, with uh, when Catherine was sharing it um, that it does depend on uh, internet connection. It doesn't play nicely with Teams. Teams takes all of your kind of processing power. Um, but yeah, we have to be careful with the rendering speed because they are presenting a lot of information. We did a few tricks with the map. Uh, we simplified, um, did some pre-processing in QJS to simplify the resolution of some of their spatial layers just so it wasn't so detailed. That's especially important if you ever want to include representation of rivers and maps, which are highly uh, kind of vectorized. So we did that, uh, their images. Uh, so they mentioned they collated all of these images of all the site photos. Uh, we compressed those. Uh, because otherwise the rendering time, you don't want to load a four meg image uh, in a whole image gallery, it slows it down. Uh, so we did do a few things like that. Tried to use the bookmarks and buttons to cut down the number of visuals loaded at each time on every page. Um, but still, I think whenever, if you've used uh, 
uh, Power BI, especially using custom visuals. People know that custom visuals have a slower rendering speed uh, than the bespoke visuals. So it's just keeping that in mind. Um, but yeah, trying not to put too much information on every page. Uh, we did have a lot of visuals on, on those pages in the end. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess, and just further to that, Laura, as well, it's all about like your UAT, so user advisory testing, both internally and then, you know, within Gibson Water, different working groups. So, you know, you can't control the viewing experience on every single browser, every single device, but you sort of just do the best you can in terms of, you know, creating it accessible for the public and in terms of it's a good experience when it renders. So yeah, that was, I guess, the approach that we um, that we had and working with the team. Good tips. Thanks, guys. No worries. We had a question here. Um, is there any kind of uncertainty captured, maybe Jolion or Catherine, in the underlying data and how we looked to sort of present possible uncertainties in future predictions in terms of how it was visualised? Yeah, that, that'll come out in the next stage that we're looking to um, publish in the coming weeks. Uh, that relates uh, primarily to our outlooks, so where there's uncertainty uh, in our water demand outlook uh, and also uncertainty in our water availability um, outlook due to climate change and other, other factors, uh, growth. And, and and, uh, and we have um, provided uh, some narrative that will also appear on the dashboard with those graphical outlooks that will touch briefly on the uncertainty. Um, but again, it's it's fit for purpose. It's for a particular audience. We don't want to go into too much detail. Um, the the other uh, location on the dashboard that exists now where where we do talk about uh, some of those uh, emerging trends. Uh, we don't go too much into uncertainty, but um, is that those um, those buttons uh, on the left on the on the home page where they talk about climate change and growth and things like that. So uh, we talk we tried to make that specific to our region. So so climate change is is a warming earth, um, but that is you know looking like it's going to manifest. Um, in um, very different outcomes for different parts of the planet. And so we tried to focus on how can we um, describe to our customers in the simplest way possible how a warming earth might translate to um, potential um, future scenarios for Gippsland. And so so there's, we touched on it there as well. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Jolian. It is always important to understand uh, kind of a bit more about the uncertainty of the information being presented in these. Um, and I guess just largely, uh, lastly, Jolian and Catherine, is if the community does have any like feedback or comments on the tool, is, have, is there a forum that they can write to or um, send anything your way? Yeah, so um, when we've shared this um, via our um, social media um, feeds, there's an opportunity for feedback through them, but we also have a contact us form um, through our website. So when when the dashboard is accessed via the Urban Water Strategy webpage, I believe there's a link to that contact us form um, for providing feedback and that would come through to our team. So we haven't had any yet, but we may do. Yeah, yep. I also um, mentioned um, earlier too that we've got um, some um, deeper engagement um, workshops um, coming up with um, sort of focus groups um, of our of our community, and uh, we're planning to provide them with the link so that if they want to, it's not compulsory, of course, they can have a look at the dashboard and be better prepared for those sessions and. Um, and one of, one of the questions we'll, we'll ask them is um, at, at those workshops is, um, what did you think of this? Um, is, is this a good way of um, conveying the right messages at the right level um, to the community? So there's that feedback loop too. Excellent. Um, well, we've just hit one o'clock, so we might just share screens again um, and just, just wrap up the session. But um, yeah, uh, before I just sort of jump into the last few slides, Jolion and Catherine, again, thank you very much. I think, you know, the people on the call, just based on the level of questions and engagement, got a lot of, um, you know, learnt a lot from this process. And I think, uh, yeah, we, we really enjoyed having you presenting and sharing a bit more about the tool. So thanks again um, for, yeah, uh, getting involved in the session. Looking at thank next you. month.
Um, we're excited to be, we're changing times. We're going for a breakfast session this time. Um, and we've got the team at uh, Central Business Intelligence um, in Brazil actually presenting. So they're an environmental consulting group um, and they work a lot in Power BI. Again, really pushing it to the limits in terms of environmental management and really contaminated risk assessments and also remediation based projects. Um, so we've got a few people from their business intelligence team that'll be uh, sharing a few of their different case studies as an example. So that's on the 21st of October, starting at 9am. Um, as we mentioned, we've recorded this session. So thanks everyone for your involvement and your fantastic questions. And again, thank you to the speakers and presenters. So we'll make it available on our blog and our YouTube page shortly after this. And just in general, again, yeah, thanks for everyone for getting involved in, the, in another great Power Beyond Data Analytics for Enviro session. So yeah. If there's um, no further questions, I'll, I'll stop the recording and Alice and I are happy to stay on for five, ten yeah. minutes. If there's any other questions, we can hang around. I know, Pat, you had a question about icon map. Um, we can chat about that. Um, but yeah, just